Hello everyone, this is The Crimson Cure, welcoming you to The Crimson Tower, a place where we keep a feminine foot on the neck of the gynocracy, feminism, and black male misandry. So go ahead, pull up a chair, stay a while, and listen. See, wherever I go, stay ready. Stay alert. I'm always prepared for whatever. I see me. There's a seat right here. I can see from all angles. I'm ready. It's time to get down to business. Hi, honey. I know you just made it to the library, but love of my life, my hero, my lion, you forgot your A-game. So come home, take it, and then you can go and conquer the world, black man. Oh, and one more thing. Would it kill you to just wear some socks? I'm just saying. Love you. And can you bring home some milk? Okay. Okay, I'll go back. I'm gonna get my head I'm not putting socks on. I'm good. I'm fly. I'm fresh. I'm gonna stop at 7 Eleven this minute. Crimsonites and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I am of course your host the Crimson Cure and as usual we're just going to jump right into the topic. So we can see the title of this, the real reason why black women like bad boys. Okay and this is kind of, I had you know we have crazy uber stories although this one wasn't crazy. I had a writer, a black man and he was telling me about his children. He has two children by two different women. And the oldest one who has a daughter with him has decided that he's not going to see her. He said he hasn't seen his daughter in a year. And he was kind of telling me the story a little bit of the, the meeting. He said uh, it was, a, you know, his daughter, I think it was, he said about 11 years old. So this was 11 years ago. She was older than him, uh, about eight years, which today makes her my age. Um, and said that when she got with him, he was in the street, young dude, you know, slanging, you know, selling drugs, hustling, doing the whole street thing, right? And he was giving her, you know, just all kinds of money, you know, and everything. And then he said once she got pregnant and had their daughter, he decided that, you know what, I shouldn't be in the streets like this. And because anything can happen, the streets was getting hot. And let me go ahead and pull some other stuff out of the mud. So he said what he did was he went into a career. He didn't go into what. And uh, it took him a while to sort of make that transition. So when he wasn't hustling, he wasn't able to give her the amount of money that he had was able to give her before. Now, that doesn't mean he didn't provide for her and the, and the new child. He was he said he was able to do that. It just wasn't this extra, extra, extra like he had when he was hustling. And he said it took him a while to get to a point where he was making more money doing what he was doing than hustling. But in the meantime, she didn't want to stay with him. She didn't like that he had switched over into more productive work that wasn't in the street and he wasn't able to give her the money that was associated with him hustling and being in the street. And that made me think about, because that is not definitely not the first time that I've heard that. Uh, I've heard men talk about it. And at times I've heard women candidly talk to each other about similar situations. And here's the deal. The real reason why black women like black bad boys is be, isn't just because he's a so-called pookie. 
it isn't just because of that. It isn't necessarily about how he treats her versus how a man that isn't in the street is treating her. It isn't about all of these other things that sometimes we say it's about. What it's really about is she's addicted to the lack of a value system or the chaos inherent in knowing you need one, but don't have one. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and repeat that. What she likes, what she's attracted to is the lack of a value system and the and or the chaos that is inherent in needing a value system and not having one. Because what that young man expressed to me was that he changed his value system and he brought his own life into more order. It stopped being so chaotic because being in the street is a chaos in and of itself, which is why it ends badly so many times because not a lot of good, clear decisions are being made from a leadership standpoint and from a structure, a system order and structure standpoint. And this is how a lot of our men get caught up and get incarcerated because being in the street is a chaotic thing. It's always something happening. It's always, you never know what's going to happen next. You know, you could be somewhere chilling and somebody bend the block and spray it, you know, and that type of stuff. You're always constantly looking over your shoulder, looking up, you know, maybe there's danger. Maybe there's not. We just had a situation where uh, the, the seven year old got shot a few weeks ago and killed. And then uh, her father, it was because her father was in the street and he had people who was gunning for him, literally. And, you know, they caught him up and didn't care that he had his child with him. So it's that type of stuff that's living on the edge, it's living in the danger, it's living in, you know, that sort of chaos. Even when the woman doesn't like the necessarily the danger that's inherent in it, what she does like is the chaos that's there. And she likes the chaos that's there because she resonates with it. All right. She resonates with that chaos. So therefore, there is no order. There is no value system here that says we can't do this and we have to do a, find a different way and a better way to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. So, ladies, I need for you to understand why you are attracted to these kinds of men, these what I call F-19s, which is just a real cute way for me to say F-Ninja. For those of you who don't know what an F-19 is. OK, this is why you're attracted to those men. He's living a fast life and, you know, he has money and things of that nature. And that's part of it. That's part of it. That's definitely part of it. But you're also attracted to him because he doesn't have a good value system. He doesn't have a value system that has order to it. That has some system to it, that has a structure to it. He lives a life in chaos, which is basically living it in feminine energy to a certain degree. Now, I'm not saying he's effeminate, but chaos in and of itself is a feminine energy. It's part of it. And you like him because you like the chaos. You don't want any order. You don't want any value system. Even if you think you might need one, you like being in a situation where things can go haywire in a moment's notice. And then nobody can really check you and nobody can really make sure that you're doing anything that you've got to do. That's why you like the so-called bad boy. It, it's not that he's cooler. It's not that he looks better. See, all of that is just a superficial. That's the smoke screen. That's the cap. Because there are plenty of men who have careers who are just as smooth, charming, debonair, suave. They're not in the street. They're handsome. They know what's going on. They got their masculinity intact. They got their stuff in order. And they're not living by the seat of their pants and yelling YOLO and all of this other type of stuff. They're not doing that. So it's not that. You're attracted to the chaos in your life and you're attracted to the chaos in his life. You like the chaos of his life. You like the arguing and the going back and forth. You like not having any leadership. You like not having any structure. 
And the only time you get tired of that is when you are older and your bio biology demands something else. Your, your female nature demands system order and structure. It demands a leadership. It demands it. And then you want to get somewhere and cry about hey, where are all the men are at that lead. You didn't want a man that led. You wanted a man that was just as chaotic as you were. And he allowed you to be. Because he didn't have a way of not being chaotic himself. So you actively avoided men that actually had leadership qualities, even if you liked him, even if you were really attracted to him. But he ended up having a value system that was worth something. That put things in order. In true order. Not chaos disguised as order. OK. So I, I need every woman within the sound of my voice to get clear. On why she's with these so-called bad boys, you have to get clear, ladies on why you're with these types of men, these F-19s. Why are you so attracted to flying on F-19 airlines? Okay, it ain't just the cheap rates of the flight. You like the fact that F-19 airlines doesn't get regular maintenance and that's chaotic. You might get on a plane that goes somewhere and you might not. You might fly or you might crash and burn. You like that type of stuff. You don't want to fly United or American Airlines or anything like that, an airline with some structure to it. They get regular maintenance. They're strict on how things are going. But those are the planes that get where they get to their destinations. F-19s never get to their destination, not without a million mishaps along the way. And you like the chaos of those mishaps. You like living by the seat in the edge of your pants. You like that type of energy that he brings to you because it resonates with you. And in many of these cases, you're able to either overtly or covertly manipulate the dynamics of that relationship because the real essence of you liking men that have chaos is that you find them or you feel as though these men are weak. And that you can control them. And this is where liking the so-called bad boy comes from. So I need for the ladies to be clear and to be 100% on this. This isn't even about other men not having it together. You avoid those men because they have it together. You like the bad boy be because... You're not even really looking for a man that's giving you the four P's because that comes with stuff. You want that. You want provision and procreation and problem solving and protection. You want it. But when you're young and out there and, you know, you're popping, you figure you can do without it. And you figure what he's giving you is enough because he's definitely giving you the procreation. He may or may not. He might be giving you provision. So you like that, the money and the sex. But he's not necessarily problem solving and his protection is chaotic because he'll go all out and kill somebody and get himself killed on your word without checking your word or without being sure about the veracity of your word. OK, so men that actually can provide. Provision, problem solving, protection and procreation actually come with a better value system because they have to have more order for things to go that the way that they need to go. You don't like order because order puts you in a certain position and it doesn't allow you to manipulate the dynamics of the relationship. So there, while there are multiple things that may go into you liking the bad boy, that's the, the real core of it is that you like the chaos of not having a value system and needing one, but you don't get it. So let you be free, free. You like it because there's less accountability there. 
dealing with the so-called bad boy. There's less accountability because he doesn't really hold himself accountable in a lot of different ways. All right. So I would like everyone to sound off in the comment section. Do you agree that this is the real crux of the matter for black women liking uh, these bad boys and these F-19s? Or do you think it's another reason altogether? So I would like everyone to sound off in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't not done that. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye-bye, Crimsonites. Hey guys, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.